Welcome to my virtual campfire, Glenn Richardson, the founder of the British UFO Network, and also the founder of the Northern England Paranormal Society, is joining me today, and I'm just really excited to find out what kind of conversations you guys are having over on the other side of the pond. Um, I'm in Seattle, so, and I know you're in England. You can explain to me where you are. <laughs> Pleasure being here. Yeah, I'm uh, in a town called Hartlepool. It's in the northeast of uh, the UK. Um, it, it, it's a small population, but yeah, that, that's basically where I'm, I'm based. Being from Seattle, we have Mount Rainier to the south of us, and Mount Rainier is a hot spot for UFOs. Um, in fact, they just recently named uh, Mount Rainier to Mount Adams is um, the UFO capital of the United States which I was kind of surprised because we have a lot of places in the U.S. that have real um, hotspot activity. Do you have that where you're at? A place called Northumberland, um, where we do, which, which is about an hour's drive from, from where I'm based. And over the years, uh, I would say the, the increase of uh, UFO activity has you know has increased quite a lot over the few years uh, for whatever reason i'm i'm not too sure but it, it is it has increased quite a lot um but regards to my own sort of research and investigation i do the whole of the uk it's not just obviously where i'm, I'm based you know um but yeah, it, it's increased for quite a lot over the years. I've been hearing that from a lot of people. I had my first encounter in um, 1996, and then um, and then repeatedly throughout the years, I've had um, seen things, had contact. Um, I think I am slightly guided in a way by by some um, by a mothership is the only way I have to describe it. Um, but I do think that over the, since um, coronavirus started, since the lockdowns, I know that um, I've heard increased activity over New York City. I've heard um, increased activity over the entire United States in general. And then one thing that I notice is that it seems like people want to talk about it more. I, I know that when I used to explain some of my stories to just um, not UFO nerds, but like just normal people, um, they'd be like, that's crazy. <laughs> or, you know, or just kind of look at me like I'm nuts. Um, so what have you noticed in the day-to-day -day interactions and just like people's conversations in general? Over the years, like I say, when I first started this, you know, the, the stigma attached to, to uh, UFOs and aliens, you know, it was a big stigma attached to it and people sort of embarrassment because of maybe getting ridiculed but I think as time got, has gone on people are more open now um which is great um the reason I, I don't know the reasons why they feel more open but I, I, just, I just feel that it's getting more popular um like you say I know I have friends over um in the US who, who do the same thing and they say themselves like you know majority of the population you know believe in the existence um, and they do over the UK and you know, I think if the truth did come out and we did have, you know, evidence and proof that these things did exist, I think if you speak to the most majority of the population, the, the response would be, well, yeah, we knew that. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it, 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 it's it's just yeah. grown, you know, and which which is good, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, it, it's not nice being ridiculed. It, 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 it's, it's terrible, you know what I mean? I, I know a lot of people, especially with um, abduction cases, it's a bit more sensitive and, you know, and the, the wanting help to find out of, of what is exactly is going on. Um, so, yeah, it's great, like, you know, they can come forward to people like myself and other people out there do exactly the same thing. But, yeah, I think times have changed and it's a lot more acceptable now, which is good. Yeah, I agree. I think people are more open to hearing other people's stories and thinking, well, that didn't happen to me. I can't like prove it because a lot of these, you know, cases don't have the um, empirical proof that that people, you know, humans seem to yeah. want. But when you experience it, it you like it's like you know, you know. Okay. So so it's. Um, but I think people are more open minded these days about like, oh well, that I didn't happen to me, but I could see how that could be scary or yeah, you know, 
you know, because a lot of times it's terrifying to see something you can't describe with words. Well, that's it. Yeah, it, it, it is. It can be. And, you know, some of the stories I hear, it, it you know, it, I think we've all seen things in the sky that we can't explain. But some of the stories that people come and and, and share with me, you know, it's like it, it's more than just something in the sky. You know, it's like, well, hang on. You know, this is uh, what's going on here. I just have uh, a love for all things paranormal and unexplained. Um, uh, majority of my life, I would say it, it's always been ufology. It's always been the UFO phenomena. But I've always had interest, like I say, in cryptozoology um spirits ghosts um what got you initially interested in studying ufos i've i've always had a uh, a big interest in in space and and things unexplained um and it's it's it's, it's unless you you knew him it, it's hard to explain but my late father he was sort of you know, he wasn't, a, he was a typical old man who was like, oh, these things don't exist. They're not real. Um, and I was watching a programme one day. I was in my teens. Um, I think it was early, early teens. And he came in and he said, I've seen a UFO. I'm like, yeah, okay. He's like, no, seriously, I have. I said, right. Because it was before you were born. And um, he said, I got woke up in the middle of the night. And it sounded like your mother was hoovering. I'm like, what's she doing hoovering? He goes, so I got up and there's your mum lying in bed. I'm thinking, what? So he goes, so I went downstairs, could still hear it. And then all of a sudden, it just lit the room and the sky outside, a red and orange light. He goes, you know, it was blinding, couldn't see anything. Um, he goes, and I opened the door, the front door. To have a look out and then within seconds it, the noise and the lights just vanished and he said uh, and for a few days it was in the the local paper all the people had seen it um and it, it just fascinated me because you know i'm thinking he's been serious here and my dad doesn't believe in things like this so it just got me more interested and i, and I was just obviously it was more set off it was more research um I was reading books and case files as whatever I could get my hands on. And I came across this book, it was a fascinating book called uh, Alien Investigator. And he was an ex-policeman and it was about his experiences and, and obviously how he was an investigator and things. Um, it was a fascinating book and it, he was an, like, say, an ex-policeman and he had his own experience and then he started investigating things and... I just found it fascinating how he was going out and investigating. So I thought that would be absolutely amazing, just going out and, and speaking to people who, who had these experiences. So I put an advert in a magazine, a UFO magazine. It was actually called UFO magazine. It doesn't exist, on, unfortunately, now because the, the editor and the owner passed away suddenly. Uh, but it was an amazing magazine, and I was getting calls 10 a day, some stuff like that, you know, it was really, wow. the amount was unbelievable. And I, I'd travel all over the UK and then listen to these stories. It was just so fascinating. And it sort of, for men, it got into like the investigation side. It was, and you learn things and you pick up things. And obviously over the years, technology changes because as far as I remember, there wasn't mobile phones when I first started. Um, and obviously the internet was pretty good. Our main goal is to help people. That's what it is. Because I, I know a lot of people out there, and this is no criticism, you know, that the it's more of a, an event, if, if you want to call it, because they'll, they'll hire a location and they'll sell tickets for people to come in. And it, it, it's more of, like I say, it's more of an event for me. It's not, a, um, but how we work is we, we don't do none of that. We just focus on helping people in their own homes or property to find out exactly what's going on. And we do go in with an open mind. You know, we're not necessarily looking for ghosts, we're looking for answers, you know, because it could be a logical explanation of what these people are experiencing. So basically, you know, that that's how we work. We we go in and, you know, we, we try and debunk claims that they're, they're having, and that's not in a disrespectful way, 
when I use the word debunk, it's just like I say, we're trying to find answers and might not, not always be in the paranormal field, if that makes sense, you know, it could be logical. I mean, I think that's a that's a really awesome mission to be helping people because because I think that um, you know they when you when you see something that you can't explain when that happens in your in your brain you kind of question everything that is around you all the time. So if you have this like um, unknown something that you can't explain and no one can explain it and there's no answers that can be really confusing and disorienting yeah. and and um so i think that that is really awesome that your mission is to help people what do you think of the theory that sasquatch are um are interdimensional um beings that travel between um uh, planets um have you ever heard that i i have heard that um if, I, if I'm honest with you, that's not something I believe in. I just, I do believe in the Sasquatch, uh, Bigfoot, but I just believe in it's something that's evolved and, you know, we haven't come across, if that makes sense, you know, or, well, I, I say we haven't come across. Um, obviously, some people have come across uh, the Sasquatch, but I just, you know, it's, you look at some of these places where these things have been seen in it, you know, it's just like the ocean. You haven't got a clue what's in there. You know what I mean? It could be anything. And I, and I just think it's, it's you know, it's just a, another a creature that is evolved on, on Earth, if I'm quite honest with you. Um, here, you've probably heard of it, um, uh, the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland. Um, you know, it's obviously we've given it the title Monster because we don't know exactly what it is, but the theory has it that it's a pleasure saw you know, uh, a dinosaur that's escaped extinct. So it's sort of like, it, not as monster, monster per se, you know, per se, it's just something that um, at one point, like a lot of things has escaped extinction and, and st it's still around. And it, it was a plausible um, theory because at one point the lock was connected to the sea. Um, now, if there's something there now, that's a total different, uh, story, but um, at some point, you know, it, it is plausible, and it's just the same with Bigfoot. It's just something I believe that's evolved on the earth at some point. And I get asked the question, well, how how can you believe in aliens and God? And I'm like, why can't I? Who says that they're not connected in some way? You know what I mean? It. Why isn't? Why does it have to be one and not the other? You know, and it it. I just think people don't look at the big picture and, you know, it's, well, you know, why do you believe that there's life out there? You know, what proof is there? I'm like, well, you're looking at proof. We a proof that either evolution or through religion, life has evolved on a planet. Now there's millions and millions of planets out there. You can't tell me it's only happened the once. You know I mean, I, I just don't believe that. You know what I mean? It's it's for me, it's crazy to think that people don't believe that's happened at once. But I think people look at it as if like we are here and they're out there, but we are out there as well, you know. And I would say it's more scary to think that we are alone. And people go, Well, okay, fair enough. Um, but to come here, they'd have to be more advanced in technology. Why can't they be? Who says we are, you know, these people have this, so yeah, there might be. Why would they come here? Well, listen, this is what we've been doing for decades, looking for proof, you know what I mean? And you can't tell me if we knew exactly there was a planet there that did have life on it, we wouldn't be doing our best to get there. Of course we would. One case I was working on, it was actually up in the Durham area in the UK. Um, and it hit the, the the witness. She was fine with it because it hit the, the 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 press as well. It was in the papers and everything. Uh, but she got in touch, and she's there was no unfortunately there was no video or photographic evidence. But the story and the backup claims that I got, it it just fit in. It was like okay, what else could it be? But she said she witnessed three objects flying in the sky. Two were military 
Apache helicopters. So it wasn't just a case of she, she knew about the helicopters. They were Apache. She knew the make. And it, she didn't recognize the third object. So doing the investigation, I got in touch with the, uh, the British government, the Ministry of Defense, um, and they were, you know, I mean, they were really uh, cooperative. Um, and the guy I spoke to confirmed at the same time and in the area, there were three objects, but there were all Apache helicopters, but wouldn't say the purpose of why they were there. Now, for me, that just sort of backed everything she was saying, but obviously mm -hmm. she was adamant that was two Apache helicopters, and he confirmed that the Apache helicopters were there, but he stated that there were three. And I thought to myself, no, you're not telling the full story. You know, a lot of things have been secret. And in some ways, I understand the reasons why, these things. Um, but going back, you know, like going back, back years and years to, to, to Roswell, you know, it was years before, you know, the, the US government came out and admitted that Area 51 existed because they had to, because obviously technology is as advanced over the years and Google Earth and stuff like that we've come across, you know, and so, and people ask me the question about Area 51, do I believe that, you know, that there's things there? No, I don't. Not now. I did originally. Um, obviously with the Roswell crash and things like that, I do believe then, but obviously with it being in the public eye so much, I think it'll be crazy if they did have anything there. You know what I mean? And obviously there's rumours now and speculation that there is another uh, base somewhere that there's a possibility that they might have te alien technology there, which I'd say is more uh, convincing than Area 51 now. I definitely think governments in general know a lot more about extraterrestrials than, than they let on to to you know believe and I sometimes I wonder why like I, I think I think humans can handle the truth um but I guess it's control I guess that's the you know control of well power. that's it I, I totally agree you know I think public would handle the truth of, of the existence but would they handle the truth of the reasons why they're keeping it secret you know that's that that's the the scariest thing why they're keeping it secret you know what I mean? It must be a lot more than just, oh, yeah, they exist. You know what I mean? We have yeah. proof that they exist. You know what I mean? As far as I'm aware, I think they're coming out now and, and, and saying, yeah, there is proof. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, I think the questions now is why are they keeping it secret mm -hmm. or why were they keeping it secret? Because it's, it's, I don't think yeah. it has anything to do with, you know, my cause, mass hysteria or anything like that. There's, there's, there's other reasons why. I want to take Minnick out here, and I think it's in connection with the abduction cases. I think it's more okay. on the lines of, of that. Um, how are they, you know, and people might think I'm crazy saying this, but this is, you know, this is what I, this is my belief, and I don't care what people think of, of me. Um, I've been doing this so long now, you know, but I believe there's a possibility that is, is this what they're trading? Um, human life for for technology you know it, some of the technology we we have that's established over the years we like like they say the self bomber yes it's 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 man-made but with what um and is that a possibility i wonder if we'll ever know you know like in our lifetimes maybe i don't know i think we will i think we will yeah i, I do i i honestly believe um that we we will uh you know, it's like I say, technology's just increased so much over the years, and I think you know, it's. I think it's a big possibility that we will find proof. I think you're right because, like, and that just think about even you and I connecting from as far apart geographically as we are, and having a conversation on this level. I think, you know, that's adding to the to the whole mix of it in general, just, you know, wondering because it's in our consciousness. So if it's in, you know, if it's in your consciousness and my consciousness, these questions of like, why then, um, 
and then having the conversation about it and other people think it too. I know that there's people that will hear this video and they'll be like thinking of, yeah, I've been wondering the same thing. Like, why are they keeping it a secret? And then maybe all of that will get so loud that they'll maybe will be part of the reason that they have to start saying why, you know, and giving more answers. Cause I know that the U S government said they were doing their disclosure but it was sort of like a, a snoozer. <laughs> yeah. It was the same over in the UK when they started releasing uh, UFO files and the archives uh, down in London, you know, and people pay, have paid good money to see these files. And I've had a look myself and a lot of stuff just blanked out. You know, you, you can yeah. get the file, it's not a problem, but a lot of it's just blanked out. So it's like, well, What's the point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, crop circles. Yeah, they're very popular in the UK, crop circles. Um, and the same same thing again. Um, it's sort of... Yes, we all know a big, a big portion of crop circles are man-made. You know, unfortunately, there's people out there who just like to, to mock people and, you know, but... I look at these crop circles and again, looking at the bigger picture, I don't believe going back yet, you know, these things have gone back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, these things, you know, they, they just haven't developed overnight. And I don't believe for one minute someone just woke up the very first crop circle, circle sir, and woke up and thought, I'm going to do a circle and blame it on aliens. You, you know what I mean? They've got, they've got this idea from somewhere. Right. Um, and obviously, we got, if you look at investigations regarding um, of what I would say a legit crop circle, you know what I mean? There's radiation and, and things like that where when someone's just made the, a crop circle themselves that hasn't got that, and it's, it's a, the formation of how the, the, the crop's been um, formed with obviously with the the paddle or the, the bit of wood they use. And, you know, it, it's totally different from other crop circles, you know what I mean? And again, I'm not saying is you know, some, something from another world, but it, there is a difference between the two, you know what I mean? And and like I said, the bigger, going back over to the bigger picture, it's like someone just hasn't decided to do this. You know what I mean? They've got the idea from, from, from somewhere. Have you visited a crop circle that you think is, is like a legit one? As in legit, I, I would probably say, um, yeah, I do believe that it wasn't man-made. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, 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 I don't know how other people feel with these things, but when I was younger and started off with the investigations with guys to crop circles, I used to think, you know, is it uh, basically um, where the, the UFOs landed and stuff like that? Now, I don't look at that now, um, that sort of theory. My theory is that, is it more of a communication? Is it more, because a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the shapes are, uh, have meanings to them. And yeah. is it actually the craft that's doing it? I don't, I don't believe it is. What I, what I think is, that, and I've seen video footage of this as well, and uh, a lot of people have come forward, I've spoke to about as well, is um, like a Sophia, like a, uh, a greenish ball of light how they explain it and i've seen video footage on youtube and things like that where it's been floating around the crops and when it's gone there's been a crop circle so mm -hmm. i'm more sort of going to the belief of is, is this you know it's come from a, a craft say uh, it's not necessarily the craft itself but is this, and is it more of a, a communication rather than just a, a landing site? Um, but I've had a lot of a lot of people come forward regarding these little balls of light um, and, and move around as if it was like some sort of craft itself. You know, it wasn't just a, a light. Um, yeah, I know. Like I've been to a place on Mount Shasta that they say a Pleiadian ship landed, and. Um, I had like an overwhelming feeling there. Uh, when you have visited crop circles, do you do you get like a intuitive feeling at all, or um, or like like would you guess at what the message might be, 
or is it just I don't know uh, me personally no I don't but I, I do have this belief as in you've probably heard of the term experiencer um, mm -hmm. where I, th I do believe that um, obviously not being abducted but experiencing sort of some sort of communication with these beings themselves um, and when you people obviously these people visit these things and having these sensations is that the reason why and is that the reason why these people having multiple uh sightings or experiences if you know what i mean it's sort of that's one of my theories and something i do strongly believe in uh you know because yeah i've seen things but nothing dramatically and uh, but I, I do believe that you know that regards to experiences this is why the you know for whatever reason the, the, they've been chosen and that's why they're having multiple sightings and having these feelings of when they get into these crop circles regards to the messages and, and and things like that i do notice that people that are experiencers like you're talking about whether they see a craft or 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 beings or um or enter a craft or whatever it is um it happens repeatedly throughout their lives and um, another thing that I've noticed um, is, as a common thread is that people will see something um, at some point in their life, but then it'll, they'll keep it in their subconscious for years before yeah. they actually tell the story or vocalize it. Um, have you noticed that? Oh, yeah, I've noticed that quite a lot. Could that be partly uh, possibility abduction I, I i don't know um and because you find that a lot with abduction cases you know that things are the back of the mind they don't know and then they have hypnotic regression and things like that and then obviously stuff comes out um but i've come across abduction cases where it, and it's again it's it's like you know when you, you talk to people who who don't believe and they're like you know they might believe things out there but like abduction thing oh, i don't think that's a bit like sci-fi i'm like it's you, you need to talk to these people, you know what I mean? And it's different. I, you know, I mean, I've come across people who don't believe in it themselves, but they're having these right. experiences, you know what I mean? And, and yep. I know people, I know a few people across the UK who do hypnotic regression and, and they've had this regression and these things have come out and it's fascinating because you think, well, you know, a lot of people think, oh, these people who have these abdu abduction um experiences that the, the, the believers and stuff like that it's not always the case you know what i mean and yeah. they do question themselves you know is it something in my head or you know is it real and as much as i, I absolutely uh sleep eat the subject you know what i mean it's, I, lo I love it it's it's fascinating that's a scary place to be for a human being you know what I mean? and it's it's not just scary of thinking of, of what could be going on. It's, it's a scary feeling. Well, if it's not, is there, is there something wrong in my head? You know, and it, it's, how did this get into my head? That's, yeah. that's exactly what happened to me when I, when I first had this experience in 96, I, um, uh, I just didn't, I was like, did I, did I make it up? Did, you know, and, and then I remember in like 2007, a friend of mine who at, I thought was a radical thinker, you know, just like one of those people is kind of out there. And I explained just part of the story, just the only part that I could say in words. And, uh, and he just looked at me and was like, oh, you were abducted. And I was like, what? Like, no, like, cause I didn't believe, I didn't believe that was possible. I, so it, even though like I think I had an experience, I was I was completely pushing it aside. And then he's like, "No, seriously, like uh, I've read hundreds of these stories, and they all sound like your story." And I was like, "That's weird." And so then that's why I started investigating it because I wanted to know more answers. And yeah. and I started reading the stories, and I was noticing these common threads. And and you know, I definitely ended up doing hip hypnotherapy because that just seemed like the a good way to get things to come out and even sometimes I'm like I don't know if I believe my own self <laughs> <laughs>
it might, it might sound strange, but only people like ourselves will, will understand it. And, and, you know, it's, like I say, it's not nice for people with, you know, having these experience of abduction because it, it's totally different. It's a different side of it. You know, it's, it's not nice what they're going through. Uh, but at least, you know, the, there's people like ourselves out there who gives them someone to talk to, even if they don't want to take it any further or, you know, it's someone to talk to who they're not going to get ridiculed. Uh, who's, who's going to believe them that they're having these things, you know, and that's what it's about. It's a really cool mission you have to to help people with things like this because I I know I know from experience it's just it is hard sometimes to find people. It's getting easier though um, nowadays. Yes. And yes, uh, are you finding that you're moving outside of of England with your research, or do you pr- still stay pretty focused? I'd be like, well, I know people out there in Seattle who we can speak to. You know what I mean? I've, I've done that many times yeah. before. I've, I've had an abduction case right at the end of the UK. And unfortunately, I don't get paid for this. I don't charge people. You know, I do have a day job myself, unfortunately. And like I said, I, I do my best to get this, but I passed it on to somebody else who was based down there. You know what I mean? As long as that person yeah. got the help. You know what I mean? And, and that's the good thing about connecting with people uh, beyond the UK, uh, like the US, you know, it's, it's great. I have a lot of friends on Facebook who are in the US and it's great because, like I said, it's, it's a broadened things and, you know, it's not just the UK. They, these things are happening, they're happening all over the world and I feel like it, it is great and absolutely appreciate that people do get in touch from other continents and other countries, you know, and, and I, if whatever I can do to help these people, I'll, I'll do whatever I can, you know. And I, Well, I think one of the most, um, like, uh, important things is to share the stories because, um, you know, obviously our government, governments aren't sharing the stories mm. very, not very freely anyway. No. Um, and are super tight-lipped. And so it makes me think that we need to be kind of the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely and and that's the good thing that with um social media is <laughs> i'm gonna sound like an old funny duty here i must admit i'm not one for social media i don't like it um but i think it's great um as a whole to with the power of with ufology and things like that because it helps people connect with other people and you know and sort of it's a platform where people can share their own experiences and, and, and don't feel like they're going to be ridiculed because they're on a, a group page or, or whatever with everybody who's thinking the same as, as them. You know, they're all there for a reason. I have people all over the world that's on my group page and it's great that they can all be connected and share the experiences and, and, and openly talk about it. And that's what it's all about. I agree. It's and it's about sharing the stories. I mean, that's how that's how history used to be told. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cause, cause, you know, when when you think about um, our evolution, and so so yeah, I think I think we're we're supposed to be sharing these stories and um, and doing the work that you're doing, investigating and and helping people. Because the I think the sooner um, we can collectively um, accept that um that there are other things you could use any word you want whether it's like aliens robots gods like whatever whatever it is that are out there that are um you know different or maybe the same as us you know we don't even know but um but i think collectively it's about it's about reaching a, a space where we're all we're all ready absolutely totally agree don't mind i would just like to you know just reach out to people and and, and you know uh if they want to get in touch with me obviously they can find me on on social media um or email which is uh british ufo network at gmail.com um for people just to keep you know spreading the, the stories keep sharing them you know what i mean it, it you know it's, it's great that people are all connected you know you, they're not alone and i know you Years ago, people probably thought, you know, is it just me? Is it, you know, I mean, millions of people having these ex- 
experiences, you know what I mean? And, and don't feel like you're going to be ridiculed, you know, come forward, share these experiences. And the more people that do that, you know, the more answers we'll get. And eventually, I don't think the government can keep it quiet. You know what I mean? Yeah. The more and more people come forward and, you know, it, it's, it'd be great. Yeah, I agree. And I was also going to say that um, anyone on your um, on on your network that wants to explain their close encounter story, like I'm happy to put those on on my um, podcast and on my YouTube as well, um, because I I think that um, I, th I just think it's important that we share. And uh, I know I've been sitting around campfires and and people have shared stories and they said this was the first time I actually said the story out loud, you know? And so if I know a lot of people write the story on your page, but if anyone wants to, to say it and, you know, on camera, I'm totally open to hearing, hearing the stories and, and um, sharing them. Excellent. That'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. This is super cool. I love, I love the connection and the collaboration and uh, it's, um, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, 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 it's yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a, a privilege being here. You know what I mean? It, it's like I said earlier, you know, it's, um, it's great that, you know, we can connect to, to, to other countries and, um, you know, we're all, we're all in it for the same reason and, and we, we need to connect and I, I mean, yeah. it, you know, it can only be a good thing and help, you know, help it all move forward. I agree. Moving, moving it forward, <laughs> moving the storyline ahead. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Thanks, Glenn, for your time and no um, enjoy the rest of your day. Excellent. Thanks now. Okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye.